So Anthropic just released their amazing new AI model, the Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which is hands down the best AI model when it comes to tool usage, specifically with your workflows and AI agents within NADN. So in this video, I'm going to show you why this is, why moving forward, you should use this AI model when it comes to building complex workflows, specifically with AI agents. And I'm going to show you actually how to use this inside your NADN workflows right now. So without any further delay, let's jump right in. All right, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about a few parameters and why this is such a game changer and why this is the preferred model when it comes to using in NADN workflows or with your AI agents that require complex reasoning. So first of all, a few things to point out in their own website, they released a few uh, uh, charts when it comes to performance, comparing it to other models in the market. First of all, in the software engineering, this is in the developer community, in the software engineering community, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet has always been the favorite model to use. And then now Cloud 3.7 Sonnet is beating all the other models in the market. For the past several um, months and or the past several models that were released by different companies like OpenAI or DeepSeek, they were kind of stuck in this benchmark of 49%, right? But this new model, the 3.7 Sonnet, actually outperforms all of them up to 62.3%. And again, 70% with custom scaffold, which again, we don't need to get into that detail. But what I want to focus specifically is the agentic tool use. Again, this Tau bench, again, the Tau or TAW stands for Tool Agent User Benchmark. Again, this is just the ability for it to measure how it performs when it comes to external tool usage, right? So that's why, like I said, in our particular scenario, when it comes to using uh, with AI agents within NADN or other no code or local tools, this particular model is going to be an amazing model to use moving forward, especially when it comes to complex workflows and, comp uh, and workflows that require complex reasoning. So one of the most important thing to point out here, as you can see, it beats uh, OpenAI 01, which again is a reasoning model. And then also the Cloud 3.5, again, like that was pre their previous model. But the amazing thing is that it's actually a lot cheaper than the OpenAI 01 model. Just to compare it, you can actually go to Open Router and see exactly what the cost is. So if you go to OpenAI 01 on Open Router, you can actually see right here. So the input token is $15 per million tokens and the output is $60 per million output. Again, this is incredibly expensive. But when it comes to Cloud, actually, if again, same thing, if you go to Open Router, you can see it's $3 per million input token and $15 per million output token. So token. So it's extremely cheap compared. I shouldn't say extremely cheap. It is a lot cheaper than O1. And the fact that it beats uh, uh, OpenAI O1 in the agentic tool use in this Tau benchmark is amazing, right? Because like I said, when it comes to uh, workflows that are very complex that require a lot of reasoning. So things like, for example, in the financial industry, if you're comparing a lot of data or if you're using your AI agents within your uh, NADN workflows to perform extremely difficult tasks that require reasoning and requires complex reasoning specifically, then again, this is going to be the most cost effective. And again, the most powerful model because of the fact that it beats all the other models in the market with, with that has reasoning capability, right? That's very, very important. And in the bottom, if you scroll down again, this is another chart that kind of shows the different agentic tool use, the agent encoding, the multi-language Q and A. So it, it outperforms all the other mo uh, models in the market and everything. So that's why, like I said, I've already used Claude uh, 3.5 Sonnet and other complex workflows. It's one of my favorite models, but I think moving forwards, it's just inevitable that you have to use this just because of the fact that how cheap it is compared to the other reasoning models and how powerful it is when it comes to performance and all these other benchmarks. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead to our NADN workflow. I'm going to actually start fresh. So the way to test this, the way to currently use this right now within AI agents, it's actually not available in the native and Tropic node within the AI agent. So let me explain what that means. So if you go and add your AI agent and you go to chat model, obviously NADN has a Anthropic chat model native integration. But unfortunately, right now, when you go to the models, as you can see right now, there is nothing uh, 3.7 sonnets is not available. The only thing that's available is the family of 3.5 sonnet models and the Opus model as well, uh, and the Haiku as well. So that's why the only way to use it right now at its current form till they incorporate that and add that model in the Anthropic chat model is to actually use Open Router, right? Open Router is great. I always recommend Open Router uh, use when it comes to 
uh, these newer models that are hitting the market. And the best way to do that is essentially adding, the great thing is now obviously NNN added their open router chat model, which makes things super convenient. So the way to do that is simply add the open router chat model and then go add your open router account. It's very simple. You just set up what I've done a, a couple of videos on this. So you can watch my previous videos when I show you exactly how to add this, but essentially just log in, go to your API keys and then just add your API key here and you can uh, add your account. And once you do, now you can toggle and you have all of these models that are available within Open Router. So the way to search for this is I'm just gonna search for Sonnet. And if you scroll down, as you can see, there's several, there's three uh, models available, 3.7 Sonnet, and then 3.7 Sonnet thinking, this is the one that that's, has the reasoning model, right? So that's how you can interact with this. And if you just select this, and again, the great thing is it supports tools. Not only does it support tool use, it actually is the best AI model when it comes to tools. So to test it out, I'm just gonna use um, a tool. I'm just gonna use a calculator actually. Again, the goal of this video is not to show you um, uh, to build like an entire AI agent from scratch, but I just wanted to show you how to use this because some, some of you are asking uh, uh, about using this inside your NNN workflows as of right now, since it's not available on the Anthropic chat. So yeah, so if I just test this again, it's just to say hello. So you can see it will reach out to open router chat model. The one thing is though, you have to be aware that it is slow when it comes to uh, because it requires complex reasoning, it is going to be a bit slower. So if your workflow needs a uh, faster response, then you can use something like a 40 mini or something like that. But again, for more complex workflows, this will be very useful. So as you can see, it reached out to the open router chat, grabbed the uh, uh, Claw 3.7 is on it and then responded back. And the reason why I said it supports tool use is this is how you can check it, right? You can actually see if you attach a tool, if it doesn't support a tool use, then it will throw an error. So anyway, so let me actually give you an example of when you could use this. So for example, a complex workflow. So if I go to my school community here, I can grab a workflow, where'd it go? So if I go to my automations, um, yeah, so if I download this, so this is a good example of, of when to use this um, on your NADN. So if I go to import now, just gonna import that quickly. All right, so this was an expense, uh, expense tracker agent that I created. So this is a perfect place where you can use a model like this. So here, what's happening is this workflow actually, so let me zoom in here. This work workflow actually designs and catches fraud. Um, again, if you want to watch how to do this, you can watch my previous video. I did a tutorial on this, uh, but essentially it catches, it monitors the transaction for your credit card and then from email, because you can set up email trigger from, from your credit card to send you emails whenever there's a transaction. And then it analyzes the email, it extracts the information about that particular transaction. And then this AI agent is complex because it has a lot of tools in it and the prompt is pretty complex as well. And then it has access to the Pinecone Vector databases where I've already uploaded a ton of my previous credit card statements, the transaction statements. So what it does is actually compares this new credit card transaction to the previous statements that it has access to from Pinecone Vector database. And it has all these other attached tools attached to this, including the search API, uh, SERP API, Wikipedia calculator and an output parser. So it uses uh, the internet search capability to reach out and look up for information about that transaction, about the merchant, and then it compares it to the old uh, data inside the Pinecone vector databases. And it's, if it sees any kind of anomaly, that's when it detects it and it informs it and it labels that email dot or that transaction as fraud and it adds it to a Google sheet. But the whole point is, again, this is just one example, but you can see that this is a pretty complex workflow. And therefore, if your data set is huge, I mean, obviously for mine, I did it this for, for demo purposes. So the data is not that big, but as you can imagine, if you're dealing with thousands of documents of transaction and financial data, and you have multiple AI tools that are attached to this agent, that are multiple tools that are attached to this agent, then this would be a perfect place for a powerful reasoning model like Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, right? So this is one of the perfect examples of how to use this. Again, this is gonna be amazing to use this. Moving forward, I'm definitely gonna use this on when I build uh, complex workflows that require reasoning. 
And I think this is going to be probably the best model for a while now going forward, unless somebody else comes up with something else. I mean, the AI world is pretty crazy. It looks like every week there's a new model that's hitting the market that's beating the previous model. But I think Cloud, again, like I said, it's been, uh, especially in the software engineering world and web development world, one of the favorite models. So I think it's going to uh, be up there when it comes to the top model usage for a while now. And it's very exciting because, like I said, the fact that now this competition is reducing the price that's good for people like you and I because we're using this as consumers whether we're building it for our clients or using it for our personal use this actually is a huge benefit and uh, for the betterment of the entire market anyways this was a quick video I just wanted to show you how to use this and explain what the difference is and why this is such a great model when it comes to uh, usage within your NAD and workflows and AI agents hopefully you found this helpful make sure you like the video and subscribe because i've got some amazing content that's upcoming and also if you're serious about learning how to build ai agents please make sure you join the community we've got some amazing projects that are in the pipeline you want to make sure you don't miss on that thanks for watching again i'll see you in the next one